Hey everybody, welcome back uh, to episode 3 of Moto with Ellery, and in this uh, video we're going to be looking at uh, using the particle collider, so using um, particles when two objects collide with each other. So uh, there's a question asked in the uh, in the user group on Facebook, um, you know, how you get uh, two objects to, uh, to have one moving along a curve and then have it um, impact another object and uh, fire off particles when that happens. So um, here we've got a curve that's moving. Uh, the object, the ball here is going to move along the curve and uh, then at a couple of points you can see that the curve gets down where it's low enough for the sphere to contact uh, the, the ground piece here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get some some particles on there. So let's hop over to the setup tab and let's see um, so uh, so here we go here we got our curve and then here we have our our sphere so we're going to select both of those and I'm going to go over to modifiers and oops, it helps if I do that in the right order let's do a path constraint so there we've got our sphere is on our path okay so now if we change the percentage you know we get the the sphere moving along the path Great. Uh, so what I'm going to do just right off the bat here is I'm going to set this to zero um, and oops, turn on a keyframe and I'm going to go down to frame 120 and I can set it up to 100%. So now we actually have you know, the animation along the curve. So one thing that you want to check here is if you're if you're running a simulation like this where it's uh, you're you have a defined curve, so you're not specifically uh, using dynamics for the collision. You know, so the ball's not going to bounce based off of how it hits. It's um, it's moving based off of the the curve. You will want to set up your curve in such a way that your collision isn't overdone. So, so right now my uh, my objects overlap too much. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this curve and move it up, and I just want to get it to where it barely touches that surface. Maybe a tiny bit of overlap, something like that. And remember that you're going to have some tolerances within uh, the collision anyway, so something like that ought to be alright. So now we can see that it's going to touch it right there, and then it's going to touch it again right there, and there's one at the beginning where it touches it. And I drug all of those points down at the same time, so I know that they're all at the same um, kind of Y height, so I know if I have one point where it hits, it's going to essentially hit at all the points. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, set this up. So uh, just kind of is a is a real brief um, intro here. Let me just make a new scene real fast. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a similar scene here, but I'm just going to put in a sphere. And then in my second mesh item, I'm just going to get and drag out um, a, uh, a box here that I'll make. That's uh, so the same kind of scene, but uh, I'm not going to be as specific about it here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this item, and I'm going to move it up here, and I'm going to make this, because uh, I'm not going to put it along a path here, uh, I'm going to go to Dynamics, and I'm going to make this a an active rigid body. And then the ground, since I don't want it to go anywhere, I'm going to make a static rigid body. And and then I'll select both of these here, and then in your Dynamics tab, you'll see that there is an Emit on Collision button that becomes um, active when you select two dynamic items. So if I choose Emit on Collisions uh, and hit Play down here, you'll see that's going to hit, and we get some, you know, particles are going to pop out of there. Great. Um, so first of all, there's the problem that there's not very many particles. So let's take and change our emission rate up to, I don't know, 500. We'll play it again. And now we get, oh, there we go, we get some particles, except they're going all over the place, which is also not what we want. So we'll take our particle simulation, and we're going to turn on gravity. We'll play it again. We'll see it works, but they fall through. <laughs> so the last thing that we have to do here is go down to particles, and we want to turn on a dynamic collider. And there you go. Now we get particles that stick to the ground. Awesome. So if... Um, if, for example, if we have this sphere and it's going to be moving, like let's go to the dynamics and go to impulse here, and I want to turn on some initial impulse in the, oh, let's go in the Z direction. Let's go negative 10. And now I'm going to hit play. So now the ball's going to, well, maybe negative 10 was too much. <laughs> negative 2. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and hit play here. And we'll see, there we go. So the it's going to give, on that initial impact there, it's going to give us, um, some some particles. Now this is going to work with impact, so it has to do with uh, physical impacts, not with rolling impact, so um, that we'll look at it in another uh, episode, but there you go. You can see as it hits, we get some particles, which is, you know, that's great. So now let's go back to this scene here, and uh, and let's uh, look at the exact same thing. So if we select the uh, the ball and the ground 
and we make them we have to make them both um rigid bodies first or excuse me um dynamic ob objects first let's select the sphere we'll make it a kinematic rigid body because it has to animate along the curve and we'll make the ground a static rigid body uh, because we don't want it to move around and now if we select both things we can turn on emit on collisions and if we go back to the beginning here though and hit play you'll see that we don't get anything happening all right, we don't get any kind of particles at all. And the reason for that is that for this to actually work, um, there has to be a trigger of an impact. And that has to have at least one active rigid body um, because nothing here is being acted on by physics. Even though I have two physics bodies, neither one is going to act on the other because neither one of them is an active body, okay? So that's gonna be our big issue here and that's why this is not working. So we have two options. The first option is to make the ball um, an active rigid body, but if we do that, we can't animate it along the curve. All right, so that becomes an issue. The second option is to make the ground an active rigid body, uh, but there's going to be kind of an obvious problem here, and that is going to be that um, the second we do this, let's do this dynamic, um, and let's make it, um, and if we do this though, uh, we're, we're just gonna have um, nothing here. So here, let me actually do this and um, let's select it, go to dynamics, and we don't want it static, we want it dynamic. And there we go. So when we hit play, you know, the, the ground falls. So um, now you could do some things like messing with, um, with, it, with sleep and deactivation and getting it to kind of hold still until it gets impacted, but it really causes some issues. Now there is one kind of cheat way that you can get this way uh, to work, and that's going to be to actually build up a support structure around this, which actually opens up some cool things. You could also shatter this and make it so that um, as the ball impacts it, it shatters it and it emits some particles, so that'll work. Um, but really the easiest way to do this if you're going to use the ground as the um, as the active rigid body is to build something around it. So let's really quickly just go and do that. Um, I'm going to make a new mesh layer here. I'm going to go, I'm going to take this stuff here and I'm going to copy it. And then I make a new mesh layer and let's just paste that stuff in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the stuff in here and I'm just going to move it down to where it's underneath. And then I'm going to loop select this stuff here. And I'm going to bevel and make sure I go out at least a little bit. Um, here, let's get up my model tools so I can see what I'm doing. So let's bevel out maybe, I don't know, 40 millimeters should be fine. And then shift click and I'm going to bevel out a little bit more. And then this is going to be kind of this uh, lip of polygons here will be what holds my object in place. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if I take this object and I make this a static rigid body, and then we go down to dynamics. I want to make sure that this is set to a mesh uh, because it is, um, you know, has a convex shape. And we wanted that to be all included. And then on the box here, I'm going to select it. I'm going to make sure it's set to just a box because it is just a box. Um, now, if I take this and play it back, we'll see we get a little bit of particles coming on there. Okay. Now we still don't have um, the dynamic collider in there. So let's go ahead and add that in real quick. So let's select that, go down here and add in the dynamic collider. And there you can see when it actually kind of bottoms out and hits here, I guess it doesn't quite hit it enough there, but it does hit it there. So it gives us some particles kind of slide and go a little bit crazy. Uh, but this overall is not really working that well, okay? So um, so this becomes problematic. Now, you can see that the bottom jitters around and you know it's it doesn't look quite how we would want it. So the easier way to do this is gonna be actually to, um, well, to cheat. So here's what I'm gonna do. Let's go ahead and I'm just gonna pause this and then I'm gonna reset this file. So let's just go ahead uh, back and revert it. And we'll say, okay, so now we're back to our our regular little object here. And I'm gonna take my sphere here and I'm gonna duplicate it. And this sphere two, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this sphere master. Okay, um, and this is gonna be the one that's gonna animate. So I'm gonna select um, my curve and I'm gonna select the sphere master. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll go back up here to modifiers and I am going to add, oops, selected them in the wrong order again. There we go, and add a path constraint. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna very quickly set up my keyframes. So we'll go from zero down to 100%. So now we've got this working, all right? Not 
that's great. Um, and now I'm going to take my ground, since I've got it here, we're going to go down to dynamics and make it a static rigid body. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is I want to pin this uh, sphere to this sphere, and then we'll make this sphere just invisible. So we could also do this with a locator, but I find that it's a little easier to do and it's going to work a little bit more consistently with a mesh item, especially if it's a duplicate mesh item. Um, so that, that's just the way I'm going to go with it here. So uh, what I want to do is first I want to align these two things. So I'm going to set my drop action here to, uh, to match. And then I'm just going to grab this sphere and drop it on there so it matches the position. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that sphere, that main sphere here, a uh, an active rigid body. Okay, so now if I select that and I control click and select my ground, and oops, let's make sure I just get those two. Now if I turn on the emit on collision and we hit play, okay, we see that works. Great. Um, so we now at least we know we have that. So let's go ahead while we're here. Let's go to the particle simulation, go to particles and turn on the dynamic collider. And then I'm going to go to my particle simulation or rather to my collision emitter and I'm going to up my emission rate to 500. And again, we can just check and make sure this is working. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, and sorry, here, let's go ahead and turn on some gravity here so that our uh, our particles actually stick to the floor once they hit it. There we go. So now we got some particles that hit when this does. Great. So the last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to uh, take the, uh, the sphere and the master, and we're going to pin the sphere to the master sphere. So the first thing that you select is the thing that you've got animated that you want to be uh, carrying the pin. And then you select what you want it to be pinned to. So let's select the master sphere and then the sphere. And then I'm going to go here to dynamics and I'm going to choose a pin constraint. And now if I hit play, you see that still nothing happens. That's because we're missing one crucial step. And, I, and I've and i done this before myself, and I, I've seen other people do it, so I want to make sure that I mention that and just point that out. It's still not having anything. That's because these constraints require uh, to um, actually physics bodies to work. So all you have to do is select the sphere master and turn it into a kinematic rigid body. So now if we just deselect stuff here and hit play, we'll see that yeah, the one sphere goes along for the ride. And as it hits the ground, we get that. It kind of will lag behind a little bit. So that's okay. Uh, you could adjust that, but, uh, but I think it works pretty good. So now I'm just going to hide sphere master. And now we just have our main sphere moving along, hitting the surface leaving little trails of particles. So you could adjust friction and all that kind of thing to get the particles to slide or do whatever you want. Uh, right now, my, um, my, my objects are set with some pretty large um, margins. So that's why some of the objects fall through. So I'm gonna set my margin on the ground down to five millimeters. And I can do the same thing on the sphere. And we should get less of the less of the particles falling through the floor. Yeah, still a little bit, but not too bad. Because once you render, you won't see those because they're just disappearing through the floor. So um, now I'm going to go ahead one more time and I'm just going to go ahead and cache that simulation so we can see it and scrub through it in real time. And let that finish up. Depending on how many particles you do or if you have more complex stuff going on, you'll take a little bit longer. Now you can see as I drag this along, I get my particles coming along. There you go, you can see they kind of fly out of there and they bounce a little bit and then settle. So obviously you can go ahead and adjust the settings then on the particles after that. But that does it for this one. This shows you how you can uh, have two animated or two objects, one of them animated, one of them not, use physics and then use emit on collision in order to get particles to emit when one of the objects impacts the other one. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. There's a couple of cheats that you might want to use, and, uh, and hopefully you can use those. If you enjoyed this video, please um, like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Um, if you'd like to give further support, go and check out my Patreon account, which is linked in the video description. Uh, that does it for this one. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.